Welcome everyone to Farming Simulator 19 coverage here at Neepit Gaming. Today's video is all about getting started in the game. We're going to be taking a look at some of the basic options within the game, uh, both here in the main menu as well as within the game itself. And then we're going to actually hop into the American map and take a look around at placing some buildings, purchasing land, those sort of things as you're looking to get started in a new game. So if you're familiar with the Farming Simulator series, you'll know that you have your single player option, which is the career mode, and then you have a multiplayer option where you can join a server or run a server of your own. You also have various various tutorials that you can go through in, in order to teach you the basics of the game, and as well as any uh, new elements that might have been added in this particular version of the game. Then you have your mod hub. Now you see we are on day two now of release and we've already have a few mods popping up. We've got one map, uh, a small tractor and a harvester. Looks like a couple of obvious options there for harvesters. You also have a search bar so that you can search for a particular mod and that should make searching quite a bit easier than what we've had to do in times past. But of course, time will tell as the mod hub begins to fill up. Let's go ahead under the options tab. We'll start off with the general settings and you can see most of these are uh, at the default levels. A few things that I have uh, played around with a little bit such as the vehicle volume, uh, environmental volume, all of those are things I play around with for recording purposes. But for the most part, uh, these are on the default levels. Okay, we move over to the display settings and we are using by default the very high settings and we're running in 1080p mode no v-sync in windows mode and for right now we're using resolution scaling of 100 percent but you can see that you can certainly increase this if you'd like to and it goes up to a maximum of 200 percent and a minimum of 50 percent so we'll leave it at 100 right now uh, your brightness level the in-game HUD scale, uh, the size of the HUD on the screen while you're in-game, uh, I have reduced this down to 70%, and that's, again, something that'll be a personal preference thing that you can adjust uh, as you move throughout the game, and you figure out what works best for you. And then field of view is at the default of 60 Then we move over to the keyboard controls. There are a few issues here and there uh, that we're dealing with right now in the game. Hopefully those will be addressed very soon in uh, in an update, a bug fix uh, patch that gets released. And one of those is around the R button to activate objects. Uh, various triggers are not working exactly right. So again, I'm sure they will take care of that. So you've got your keyboard controls and your gamepad controls if you're using a gamepad. And you can see we've got various uh, opportunities to, uh, to use the mouse and or the keyboard for various functions. And then finally, we move over to the mouse sensitivity, which I am for now leaving at the default of 100%. So that'll do it for the main options uh, within the main menu itself. Now let's move into the career mode. Now we've got plenty of opportunities for save games. I believe in the past we've had uh, a total of 20 that it would allow you to have. So you've got plenty of opportunities, 15 to 20 is enough to do a lot of different types of scenarios and a lot of different types of farms, particularly with the new elements that have been added here in Farming Simulator 19. Okay, we're gonna choose, and I'm gonna double click on Save Game 1, and we have three options. So how do we want to go? This will determine how we want to start our new farming experience. Our first option is as a new farmer. This is a great option if you are a beginner to the series or beginner to farming overall. In this particular scenario, you're already going to come in owning some land as well as some equipment. You'll be in the Ravenport, which is the American map, and we'll teach you how to play farming simulators. This is where uh, you're going to be shown a lot of different tutorials and have an opportunity to learn the basics of the game. So a very good opportunity there if you want to learn about the game itself. Then we move over to Farm Manager. Now this is the one that is most appealing to me. In this case, we're gonna start with substantial funds, but no land, 
no buildings, and no equipment. So we start with nothing. It's just us on the map. We're going to have to purchase anything and everything that we're going to use. That becomes particularly important, particularly the land, uh, not having any land, because in Farming Simulator 19, you can only change or alter the land place buildings, cut trees, mow grass, that sort of thing. You can only do that on land that you own. So no more going around the map and cutting all the trees for forestry on uh, fields and areas that you don't own. That will no longer work in this game as you must own the land in order to uh, work with the land in any way. So this is going to be a completely freeform start for us where we have money and nothing else. So we're going to need to purchase or lease uh, anything and everything. Finally, we have the option to start from scratch. This is for uh, a more hardcore, very, uh, a very much harder experience in the game because we're going to have very limited starting capital and we also don't own any land or equipment. So very similar to the farm manager with the exception that our starting capital is going to be much smaller. And then in addition to that, our income is going to be hurt because the economy is going to be very tough and the gameplay elements are on their most realistic setting. This speaks to things like uh, terrain and uh, crop destruction. So crop destruction, in the past, you've been able to drive across uh, your crops in various states of growth or maturity with no consequences. It did not harm them in any way, but with crop destruction, that has changed. You're now going to uh, be able to destroy the crops by driving over them. So you're going to have to be very careful about moving around your fields in order to minimize the amount of destruction you do to the crops. Now, the great thing is it's an option. You can turn that off in the menu so you don't have to worry about the crop destruction if that's something that you're not interested in. And we'll take a look at that uh, as part of the in-game options once we get to that part. So I'm going to go ahead and select Farm Manager option number two, and then we have the option of two different maps. The Revenport map, which you can see clearly from the screenshot, is the American map, as well as a more European style of map. We're going to choose the Ravenport map, and then we're going to click on continue. That's going to bring us into the screen where we're going to choose our character. Now, you've got four different character models for male and then four different character models for female, and I'm going to quickly move through these. Character one and you'll see how th these change on the right hand side of the screen. So character one, and then two, three, and then finally character four, and then we move into the female characters, one, two, three, and then four. So for our purposes, we're going to leave it on character one. Uh, the hairstyle really won't matter because we're wearing a farming simulator cap, which you can see here below. There are There is the basic farming simulator cap as well as various different manufacturers of equipment that you'll notice there within uh, the options as well. So several different options for hats. Then we've got our shirt color. Unfortunately, at least for now, we don't have the option to change anything about our jeans or boots, which I find kind of odd. But for now, we're going to leave this on blue, but you can see there are certainly many other options uh, that you can choose from there. We have the option for a vest that we can wear as well, and then accessories, which right now is simply sunglasses. So there you go. Our options that are available within character creation. We're going to click on continue, and that brings us to what mods that we want to have loaded within the game. Right now, I only have one mod, and that is the pre-release or pre-order uh, bonus of the Mahindra Retriever which was uh, shown off in uh, some of the, the pre-release footage. So that's going to be loaded for us, and we'll have an opportunity to purchase that within the storefront. So we're going to leave that box checked, and we're going to click on Start. And so now we get to the point where, of course, the game is going to load up the map, and we're going to have an opportunity to get started. So we're going to have to, here at the very beginning of the game, we're going to have to purchase land. We're going to have to place down buildings. We're going to have to purchase or lease uh, equipment. So we're going to have to do everything in order to get ourselves started. And of course, we can also do some missions. Let's go ahead and click on the start button. And the first thing I want to do here is read through the message it gives us at the bottom just to 
really make sure we understand where we are and the scenario that we're starting with. It lets us know that you have enough money to start the, fa the farming business of your dreams. What will your specialty be? Farming, livestock, forestry, and so on. The choice is yours. First, buy some land, buildings, and the necessary tools. Then sell your products and expand your farm. So if you notice in the top right-hand corner of the screen, we have $1.25 million. But before we do anything and move around uh, at all, I'm going to press the escape button and let's come out and let's look at the map itself. Now we can drag this map around, uh, zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. So we're going to take a look at the map. It looks like there are, what, 26 different fields of obviously varying sizes, some of these fields. Uh, and you notice here's our indicator. We're sort of in the bottom right hand corner of the map right now. Fields like 25, 26 are very small compared to fields like 8, 11, 13, and so on that are much larger. And of course, the larger the fields, the more we're, it's going to cost us in order to purchase those areas. And the way we purchase land is right here from this screen. You notice in the bottom left-hand corner, the lands function. Let's go ahead and click on that. And this is going to bring us into the map. And now, any areas that we already own are in highlighted in green. And you can see we don't own any land right now. So as I click around the map, you can notice for the first time in the Farming Simulator series, we're not purchasing fields. We're actually purchasing areas of land. And that becomes important because that's where we're going to place our buildings. We not only need the fields that we can work, but we also need the surrounding areas that we can use uh, to build up silos and storage and a uh, farmhouse and so on. So as I click around, you can see the value of these different pieces of land. So again, if you're looking at forestry, you need to make sure you purchase an area that has a lot of trees on it or that you're going to plant trees on. But again, you can see the differing amounts. If we go up here and click on the area of land that includes field number eight, it is a little over $1.2 million. So that would take basically all the money we have if we wanted to start there. But as I look around the map, I'm trying to think of where we, we want to start our farm. And in order to start our farm, I'm looking for a more central area. So for our purposes, I'm going to click on uh, field number seven because it is very centrally located on the map. If we move around the map a little bit, let's go back to the map overview for just a moment. We're going to scroll in. And as we scroll in, eventually all of the various points of interest will become highlighted. Again, right now we are sort of in the, uh, the bottom right hand corner of the map. Here you see a barn and the the biomass heating plant, the, the spinnery for your wool, as well as cotton, I believe. Uh, restaurant, here's your main shop where you're going to pick up all of your equipment after purchase. You've got the pork grain elevator over here, lime station, sawmill there for your forestry. And then as we move around a little bit, you're going to have a few railroad uh, areas there, and then a central grain located but right centrally located on the map is the biogas plant. And of course, that's where we could uh, we can make and sell silage. So that's going to be uh, very important as we move forward, as that is one of the, the options that I really enjoy doing within the game. So if we highlight field number seven or area that contains field number seven, you can see it's going to cost us $644,000. Let's go ahead and purchase that. Yes, we want to purchase this land. Now you can see it's highlighted in green. And I'm going to hit escape. Now we're still in the same area as we were before. So if I press the tab button, normally that would uh, work us through any of our equipment. Right now we don't have any equipment. So let's start out by coming down here to field 26. And let's just take a, a glimpse at the size of field 26 and then you notice as we get close to the field 
we notice that there are sunflowers on here and they are ready to harvest as well as showing us the owner in the bottom right hand corner it is fully fertilized 100 percent and zero weeds so as we move around you can see we're not actually uh, doing any crop destru destruction here so let's press escape and come in and take a look at some of our other options across the top of the screen. We've taken a look so far at the map, which has the option not only to see all the points of interest, but also to purchase different plots of land, as well as sell those, by the way. You can click on areas that you own and you have the option to sell those. Okay, the second tab takes us into the various prices for the different crops. You can see we've got uh, some new icons here uh, a, a different look to some of these icons from times past and if you want to see what these relate to you can always come back to the map and you can see there this is the icon for wheat barley and so on okay then we move over to our vehicle overview again this is similar to what we've seen in times past it will have a list of all the vehicles that we own within the game uh, as well as the length of time we've had them, the number of hours uh, of work we have on them, and so on. We'll come into our finances tab, and you can see we've spent $644,808 so far, and we have a little over $600,000 remaining. And of course, it gives you the breakdown of where that money has come from or gone to. Animals, we don't have any uh, pens set up or animal enclosures set up just yet. So there's nothing to show here. Then we come into the contracts and you can see there's not one for every field. We've got a few of these um, I've seen and it seems to be a random assortment because I've seen uh, anything from harvesting uh, to transporting that type of thing. So your basic types of uh, contracts that you have, but it's not for every field. You can't go to just any field in the game and and do work so you're going to have to choose from these and if you notice we go into one of the harvesting options twenty five thousand seven hundred and eight dollars but we can also use our own equipment or we can lease the equipment that would be used for this all right so if i click on that we've leased the equipment and now we've got a progress bar so now we can come back out to the map. We know we've got to harvest the corn in field number eight. And then not only that, we have to take the product to the port grain elevator. So we're not actually going to do that right now, but I do want to bring you back out so that we can have an opportunity uh, to look at, at exactly what we're dealing with. So you notice field number eight, which is very close to our field seven area that we own. And then it's showing us on the left hand side of the map that we need to once we have all of that corn we need to take it to the port grain elevator so it's got the that area highlighted but uh, you notice there's not a whole lot of hand holding it doesn't immediately start us at the field we need to get to the field and in this case we can press tab here is the the equipment that we've actually leased in order to uh, complete this particular this particular contract. So there you go, there's our header and our harvester, as well as uh, the trailer. And then we have our uh, tractor trailer truck, as well as the trailer there, in order to finally transport all of our corn uh, to the pork grain elevator. So of course, we could use our own equipment if we had some, but the, by virtue of having to lease this particular equipment, it's going to take away from our profits on this particular uh, scenario. Now, if we come over to this screen, you notice this is where I was talking about a little bit earlier with some of the bugs in the game right now. Uh, normally, you'd be able to come up here and an option will pop up on the screen to tell you to press a certain button, E or R, or whatever button you might have uh, mapped to this particular uh, control, but these triggers aren't working right now and any buttons I press to this point have yielded uh, no way of actually getting into the storefront. So at this point I just have to simply press the, the P key in order to do that. 
Okay, now that we've taken a look at the contracts, of course here, I can also cancel out of this one. Uh, this will remove the contract and show it as failing. And then we have the opportunity. Let's go ahead and cancel it. Show you what happens when you do there. It shows failed. So we did not get any money. And then we can also complete this one and it will remove it from the list. Interestingly, you don't get a second opportunity. That one is now gone. So we'll have to look at the other contracts as we move along. So under statistics, of course, this is all the various uh, amount of time that you've spent as well as the number of, of hectares that you have sown or harvested and so on. So a nice information tab there. Then we come into the game settings. There are a lot of things to change in here. And again, this is the number of options within the game itself. You can name your save game, change your time scale, uh, turn the AI traffic on the roads on or off. Let's go ahead and turn that off for right now. The dirt buildup on your machinery, you can turn that off and have it build up very slowly over time, normal speed, or very quickly. And then, of course, you can purchase uh, different equipment to uh, wash and clean your vehicles. Automatic engine start, whether you want to press a button to start the engine or if you want to uh, have the engine start immediately upon entering the vehicle. Stop and go braking. This uh, goes into how you get into uh, reverse uh, fuel uses. Again, plenty of different options. Then we get into the AI helper. So you have the opportunity to, to hire different AI to work on your fields. And there are certain functions that they can perform, others that they cannot perform. That has been expanded within this year's game. And supposedly now, the AI can do things like mow grass, which they have not been able to do outside of mods in the past. But here, it's letting you know that um, you have some different options for how you want the AI helper to handle things. Do you want it simply to increase the cost of the helper by purchasing the fuel, meaning that the fuel will always remain the same? Same thing for the seeds, it'll purchase the seeds, or, of course, we can turn this off so that it will actually use the fertilizer and we'll have to refill it. Same thing with the seeds and the fuel and so on. Plant growth, you have the opportunity to go slow or you can turn it completely off if you so desire. You can go slow, normal, or fast. That will affect how quickly your plants mature and go through the various growth stages. Uh, plant withering will determine whether or not your plants have, after a certain amount of time when they're fully mature, will actually wither and have to be um, uh, taken care of outside of harvesting them. Then here is your crop destruction. Right now I have it on, which means that if I drive across my crops, it is going to reduce the yield by destroying the crops in my tire tracks. Periodic plowing is required. This is... Uh, very similar to what we've seen in years past, whether or not your fields are going to require you to plow them every so often. And the information on the different fields will show you uh, when that's needed. And also lime required. We saw earlier on the map, there is a place to purchase lime. So do we want to leave on the option that would require us every so often to uh, keep the yields high in order to put lime on those? And then, of course, weeds. Uh, you can turn these on or off as well, and whether or not you're going to need to weed your field. So a lot of different options here uh, dealing with the fields, starting from how quickly they grow all the way through crop destruction, plowing, lime, and then finally the weeds. Moving over to uh, the general settings, here you can see uh, various Measuring units, uh, for me, I've changed this over to miles. Uh, you can go from hectares or acres. Colorblind mode is within the game, uh, as well as several different options. Now, here is another opportunity for uh, some things that you might want to tweak as time goes along. The steering speed, how quickly the, the steering wheel returns to its default position. This is particularly uh, pertaining to using a keyboard and mouse to steer as I am uh, currently. In the future, I'll be moving to uh, probably using my Logitech G920 wheel and pedal set, 
but for now I'm just using the standard keyboard and mouse. Also, the switch to trains by default, this is on, meaning that as you tab through uh, your different machines, it'll also include or not include the train in that. And then we have uh, all of the different volumes that we saw a little bit earlier in the main menu. We come in under keyboard controls again from the main menu, and then we get to the help screen. This is where you can scroll through here and get a lot of information about different things. Here you, it talks about buying fields and areas that we can uh, purchase and or sell. And also, if we scroll down, I believe it is at the very bottom or very close to it anyway. Let's see if we can find it real quick. The AI Helper, there we go. It shows us that these are the various tasks that we can assign and hire an AI helper to. Cultivating, sowing, harvesting, all of those are uh, the same as what we've seen in times past. But now, mowing, uh, tedding, using the tedder, and wind rowing, I don't believe those were available for AI workers. Again, by default, there are mods which do a wonderful job of helping out with this. But by default, I don't believe these were available to hire AI helpers. So this gives you an idea of exactly how it works. Then if we come down one more step, it also gives you some best practices whenever deciding to hire your AI help, uh, which is start them in the corner of a field. Make sure there's not anything in their way because they are not good at working their way around obstacles. And don't put too many workers in the same field. So you can have more than one worker in the same field. And then any work related to grass, which would be like the mowing uh, or the tedding or, and so on, make sure it takes place in the field. So in other words, you're not going to uh, want to assign them with the task of mowing an area outside and around the fields like this. You would actually want to plant grass and have them mowing within the field itself. All right, now let's move on to actually placing down some buildings. We're going to come back into the storefront. We're going to go under placeables. And then you see we've got animal pens, we've got silos, we've got decorative objects and miscellaneous objects, as well as sheds and a farmhouse. So let's go ahead and click on farmhouse. And you see we have one farmhouse so far, 350000 so a very nice farmhouse. But this price can be misleading. And the reason is, you're not only going to pay the $350,000, but you're also going to pay the amount of money uh, that I assume is there for uh, deforming the terrain around the objects. In other words, the flatter the area that you're building on, the less mo additional money you're going to have to pay for the terrain deformation. So let's go ahead and double click here on our farmhouse. And unfortunately, right now, it has started us at the area where we are, where we want to be is on area number seven. So I'm going to actually hold down the tab and get us over there very quickly. There we are. So here we are on field number seven. Again, we can zoom around to see, and this is a fairly flat area. Uh, there is no perfectly flat areas on this map, I don't think. But notice in the top left-hand corner, how much money it's costing. Remember, 350000 was the stated price for us, but already you can see here we're at 380000 and as I move it around, I'm up over 400000 now. So it just gives you an idea of the total cost that you need to keep in mind, not just the, the listed price. But as we move around, you notice it's not a terribly large amount of money for the farmhouse, but if we come back in, Let's change this to the silo. And let's just put the basic grain silo, 110,000. Now we're up to 130,000, 132, 33, and so on. 154,000 to put it right here. So the cost is certainly going to vary based on the size of the object you're trying to place as well as the terrain itself and how level it is. Let's go. actually go back to the animal pens. Now is where it really gets interesting. So let's go in and take a look. We have some different sizes 
starting from at the far left, of course, we've got our doghouse. You might have noticed the dog in the initial trailer for the game. So we've got a doghouse. And then we have two sizes of uh, enclosures for the different animals. So we've got chickens. Then we move on to cows, horses, pigs, and then finally sheep. All right, if we come back to the cow pastures, as an example, the basic cow pasture, $100,000. Again, this is the base price, and then we'll see how much more is added to it whenever we uh, actually try to place it. But $100,000 there, it can hold 50 cows. The larger enclosure, three times the cost, but it can hold four times the number of animals, up to 200. So let's go ahead and double click on this one. And let's see, so 300,000 was the amount of money that it was listed at. You notice that this will turn, uh, the enclosure will turn from green to red if I am unable to uh, put a particular uh, building in that area. But now notice the amount of money that we're gonna be spending. It's not 300,000 like we saw listed. In this case, it's actually $574,000. And again, that's going to change as we move around. And then if I move outside of the land that we own, you notice it is not going to allow us to do that because we don't own this land. But in this case, we have the opportunity to uh, rotate around using the arrow keys in my case. And that will give you an opportunity to um, align the different areas, whether it's the water troughs or the feeding troughs, manure, and so on, uh, to, to align the way you want them to on the field. Also, we have grid snapping. If you're in an area where there's a grid, I haven't, I've really been hit or miss um, in this particular case. I haven't seen where that's really been very helpful to me uh, but I'm sure there are opportunities that I simply haven't come across yet where it would certainly help me out but again the the main point of this particular video was just to give you an idea of some of the basics of the game that you're going to be dealing with from the very start and one of the huge keys getting started in this particular scenario where we have no land no equipment and no buildings is that it's gonna take quite a bit of money to purchase a plot of land and then to try to put down any additional enclosures. In this case, if we wanted uh, the larger of the cow pastures, it's gonna cost us $539,000 or thereabouts in order to get this place. So quite a bit of money is going to be spent just setting up and expanding your farm. I can't wait to get going in our gameplay series. But for now, thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully this has given you an idea of some of the basics and some of the, the concepts of the game that you'll be coming in contact with at the very beginning. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue Farming Simulator 19 coverage here at Knee Pit Gaming.